Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. Let's start with the birthday girl, Liz. All right. I believe it's going to be a fantastic weekend, and I get to see friends and family as we celebrate me. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Celebrate me. How's how's that? Happy birthday to Mama Liz. Thank you. Okay. Let's move over to the His Radio Plus producer desk, Ninja, I believe. I believe Sunday will be Ollie's first day in church nursery, and he'll have a good time. Yay! Yeah. He's growing up so fast. (laughs) Yeah, gonna be driving before you know it. <laughs> did you, did you just shush me? I did. Oh, you shushed me. I don't want her to cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jake, I believe. I believe that this will be a very relaxing weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Scott, I believe. I believe in an R and R weekend. Rest, relaxation. Oh yeah, football too. Stop the music. Why? No, seriously, stop the music. We've got a very important. Open mic from the My His Radio app. Okay. Before we move on any further with I Believe Friday. Very important. Very important open mic from the My His Radio app. Here it is. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Liz. Happy birthday to you. Love you, girl. I believe you're going to have a great weekend. There you go. Now we can get it started. All right. I believe Friday the birthday girl is here. Mama Liz, she likes coffee or skinny latte thingies. Skinny vanilla latte extra hot. Let's see? <laughs> you bring a few of those. A maybe few? A, maybe a Coke Zero or I'm two. I'm already wired. That I don't kind need of stuff. Yeah, she is, but she hasn't had her beverage yet. Right. She wants her coffee. Okay, I believe Friday. Open up the My His Radio app, tap on the open mic, and just start your sentence with, I believe, here are the open mics. I believe Liz is going to have a great birthday. Happy birthday, girl. Woohoo! I believe that I'm going to have a burger later with... Pines, tomato ketchup on it. Mmm. This is Chris, and I believe it's going to be a great, glorious weekend. And I thank God for it, and I thank you, Redmond His Radio, for doing all that you do, and I appreciate everything. Have a blessed one. I believe God is going to restore my family to me, my son and daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Good morning. I believe that God is going to protect and give my daughter, Amanda, a good flight home to Texas after spending a week here in Greenville, helping me move. I believe in miracles, and I believe that anything can happen, and I believe it's gonna be a great day. I believe that the tides are seriously changing and that God is always with us. I believe I'm gonna do great on my side of the class, and I'm also going to get a lot of sickness again. I believe that I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. I believe that God is going to keep the rain at bay and we're going to have a great day at Dollywood tomorrow. I believe my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will stay faithful till the end. I believe that I'll get 100 on all my quizzes that I have today. I believe that my wife and my friend's wife are both going to receive a miraculous healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I am tired and discouraged and in need of prayer. I believe that I will grow up and be a pastor for the rest of my life. I believe my family is going to be safe in California from the fires. I believe that God is going to touch my niece and help her with the addiction she has and the addiction classes she has taken to be able to get her newborn baby back. I believe that this is going to be a great weekend because I am off and my church is celebrating 20 years of beautiful worship and great ministry and we're gonna have an awesome weekend. I have been blessed with a great opportunity to go on a missions trip with my church in January and I believe that God is going to supply every need. I believe God is good even if I'm going through a rough period right now. I believe that my husband and my daughter are gonna have a wonderful weekend. I believe that God's gonna answer the prayer about the loan so I can get my truck for work. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I believe we're going to get great news from our fur baby's ophthalmologist today. I believe I'm being good in school. I believe that God will continue answering my prayer to surround both of my teenage daughters with a community of true Christian friends that are followers of Christ. 
I believe I'm going to have a great day tomorrow with my best friend celebrating her birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Mm -hmm. You know who else's birthday it is? Mama Liz. Thank you. (laughs) I believe Friday. How about you open up the My His Radio app, tap on the open mic, and start your sentence with I Believe. Rob and Liz in the morning. On His Radio. Okay, so the stair climber, I you know, I don't know if you've ever done one at a gym. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. But it's such a good workout. But I've tried to do it, and it I can get about There's minutes. different versions of them. Now they're really sophisticated. They're actually stairs that move. Yeah. They're steps that move. Right. Back when I got started in fitness, it was like two, it almost looked like two pedals that you stand on. And you move them up and down, and they were like steps. Like a gazelle, almost, in a way. I guess, I think that's what they called that. Well, um, Crunch Fitness did a 9-11 stair climb challenge, and of course what they were doing that for was to honor the first responders who lost their lives um, in the tragedy of 9-11. World Trade Center, of course, Twin Towers. Um, 2,220 stairs in total. This took a while, okay? Um, And they had hundreds of participants, like, in each location where they did it. So there were hundreds of people that were lined up that wanted to do this stair challenge. That's great. I think so, too. And I also know that, um, like, different fire departments, even locally, uh, did, like, you know, the high-rises would go to, you know, maybe the downtown areas or wherever, and they would do their own kind of stair challenge. Oh, yeah, that that happens almost every year in a lot of different cities where they go to the big buildings downtown. Right. And and use those stairs to go up. Right. And, you know, 23 years removed, I love, you know, because we always say never forget, and I love that we aren't, that we're remembering Mm -hmm. how... What I remember so vividly about that time is how we came together. It didn't matter what you believed. It didn't matter your color. It didn't matter your opinions at all. Everybody just came together to love on each other and get through what Because we happened. certainly needed each other. Absolutely. And boy, were churches full. Oh, my goodness. For weeks after that. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, not only uh, remembering the events of that day, but if we could recapture that feeling that we had weeks and months later, wow. Me and my coworkers did the 9-11 stair climb at Clemson University. I think I did somewhere around 200 flights of stairs, and we are all walking funny. I am sure after that had happened on 9-11, thank you for doing that, by the way. Yeah, you know? it's not something that you just decide on a whim, I think, to do because it is difficult. But man, what you're doing and honoring, right? It's got to, you know, it's got to feel good that you can, you know, almost like put yourself in a position of just honoring those that lost their lives. There was a lot of firefighters lives. that did it on 9 11 that day, mm-hmm. the, the actual stair climb. Yes thing on the stair master or the stair climbers that that are at i think crunch fitness spearheaded it was it. one yeah. but a lot of people started joining in at different places just like at clemson university yeah we have some uh firefighter friends and they have done it every year as far as i know since 9 11 uh since it happened in 2001 um and so i know that they did it again this year but i love how they just keep those memories alive Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. Ketchup. After you open the ketchup, where do you put it? Let's let's uh let's start with Jake. I put it in the fridge. Okay. Ninja. Refrigerator. Okay, so his radio plus desk says the fridge. Mama Liz. I put it in the fridge because the rest of my family loves it that way, but I would rather have it room temperature. Okay. Uh Scott. After opening, refrigerator, because I like it chilled. I wonder where you keep it. You can let us know on the open mic. Uh, that's on the My His Radio app. Heinz, the ketchup company themselves, they have mustard and Heinz 57, all the above. They would know. And so they did a post. And they literally said, FYI, put your ketchup in the fridge. Look, I just spent money. Don't tell me where to put my ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would know that's where you put the ketchup. I guess so. Refrigerate after you open. That My wife does that. She puts it in the fridge. But do you like it room temperature or do you like it chilled? I hate ketchup with a passion. I'm sorry. I don't need to use that word. 
Uh, I dislike ketchup with a passion. Who don't like ketchup? Me. I don't like ketchup. So I really don't care where you put your ketchup. What condiment do you use on your french fries? I don't. When I eat french fries, I don't. I don't need anything for that. Some people do ranch. I'll try that from time to time, but ketchup, get out. On no. A, on a hamburger? No. No? No. So you use mayonnaise, mustard? Uh, mustard, yellow mustard, no calories. You know that's true. Um, wow. I've never met anybody that didn't like ketchup. Right here. Allison texted and said ketchup has to be in the fridge or it will sour, mm-hmm. and that's gross. So, yeah, if it sours, it's gross, but... I don't know. You're overlooking some others. Some Oh, yeah. There are several that agree With, about ketchup. Uh, Tiffany. Tiffany does not. Yeah. Like, how how many are there at least? Two. What? Two? Oh, there's t- oh. two others. Two others that agree they don't like ketchup. So, See? including you, that's three people out of 350 million in this country. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open mics are coming in through the My His Radio app. Well, I'm with Rob. Ketchup's gross. I'll put mine in the trash. Mm-hmm. Good morning. I don't eat ketchup either, but I will eat tomatoes. My daughter loves ketchup. My grandson eats ketchup and bread. They love ketchup, but I don't. You always refrigerate ketchup. It says it on the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Holly doesn't like it either. See, Holly I'm telling Holly just texted. You. She said, yuck, ketchup. I'm not the only one on the planet that doesn't like ketchup. Well, no, there's five of you. There's five? Start a no ketchup club. Sean said in a text, uh, no ketchup for him either. He said chili is the perfect replacement. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Did you hear Ninja say that again? Ew. She didn't like that. Chili? I mean, fries and chili? Yeah, man. Chili on a hot dog, chili on a hamburger. chili, fries, and cheese. That is the bomb diggity. I mean, it's good. Chili on chicken fingers? Like, I'm going to keep going. It's good. Okay, so a different Sean said, um, look, if you've ever had a chance to see how ketchup is made, you would not eat it. Come on, Sean. Either. (laughs) His dad showed him, I guess, when he was a kid, and he hasn't eaten it since. Really? I don't know you got a great dad. No, ketchup I love that. Ketchup's awesome. (laughs) I don't even know, y'all. Okay. No, no. Don't like it. Uh, Here's some uh, open mics that just came in from the My His Radio app. I'm with you. I don't like ketchup either. All right. I like ketchup. But it has to be Heinz ketchup. All other ketchup, it's not even ketchup. It's just sugary tomato paint. Okay, so if you were in our family, you must have been adopted. Because in our family, ketchup on chicken nuggets, ketchup on hot dogs, ketchup on meatloaf, ketchup on fish, ketchup with macaroni and cheese and uh, spaghetti. What about eggs? Some people put ketchup on their eggs. Look, I do, yeah. If I have to eat an egg, I'm going to slather it with ketchup. Why eat an egg then? Because they're good for you. I mean, I have to choke them down somehow. So Ninja was about helps. to say something. What was it? I, I eat it with, eat eggs with ketchup sometimes. Yeah. yeah. See? So I, I know some people do that. Yeah, yeah. Two out of three. <laughs> However, I think Michael agrees with you. He texted and said, Polynesian sauce is the best condiment, and you can put it on fries or a salad. I've never, I've never heard of Polynesian sauce on a salad. Neither have I, but my family is a fan of the Polynesian sauce. So is my family, but they put it on chicken. Yeah. Not on salads. Yeah, okay. well, thanks to Chick-fil-A, that's why. Yeah, well, Joey, not my Joey that I'm married to, but a different Joey. He said his wife puts ketchup on grits. Yeah, that's <laughs> Me what too, I, That's Holly. what I think. <laughs> Ew. Here's some open mics from the My His Radio app. Heinz ketchup all the way, in the fridge, on everything. It's the best there is. That's all I got to say. Have a blessed day. Hello, my name's Rebecca. I agree with Rob. I do not like ketchup. I mean, ketchup is good on hot dogs and only hot dogs because I'm a big mustard fan. Canada, they have something called five-ingredient ketchup, which is Heinz as well, but it doesn't have any artificial stuff, and that's good stuff. It's just basically tomato paste with a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of sugar, but... You know, naturally, it's a lot better. God bless you. I wondered if I'd even try that. That does sound different because it's five ingredients. I'm glad you told us that on the open mic. Yeah, and supernatural. So, yeah, I think that's a way to go. And, yes, Rob, you should try it. Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. 
Robin Liz in the morning. It's his radio. Margaret's out on a walk with her dog. You know, it's out in nature. They're having a great time on the trail. And all of a sudden, she comes up on all these pine cones. Uh-huh. And and they're in a design. And she notices, wait a minute, this is this looks like it's pine cone art. I mean, it's literally in in a, like a circle. There there seems to be over a hundred, maybe, as I look at this post. And I'm like, wow, that does look kind of neat. She thinks maybe it was an art student at the college up the road. Oh, well, that makes sense. Maybe taking some pictures, doing something and posting it. So she's like, wow, this looks kind of nice. There's even some leaves in it for fall. Oh, so it's like they've placed them. They've hand placed the leaves, yeah. possibly. Yeah. You know, a lot of people make crafts out of pine cones. You can make bird feeders out of pine cones. You put some peanut butter on it. Oh, And then yeah. you slap the bird seed on That's it. That's the kind of best thing. way I like to eat pine cones is with the peanut butter. They're really good. Oh, my. <laughs> Robin Liz in the morning. On his radio. Here's something that happened just last week where the Philadelphia Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. That's the whole department. I had to say that. They put out a memo. An email that said to all of its employees, no eating at your desk. I mean, they said more than that, but well, that sure. was pretty much what they did. There's so many people that responded negatively to that that they <laughs> immediately sent another email. Uh, no, you can eat at your desk if you want. Well, yeah, they were trying to, what they said was, they were trying to get people away from their desk for their mental health. That kind yeah. of thing. And also trying to get business to like local restaurants and, you know, but at the same time, we pack our lunch so that we can save money. Right. You know, and so, um, yeah, it was not even two hours after the initial email went out that they were like, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Eat, yeah. eat wherever you want. It's okay. It's okay. Right. I get it. Like, Scott, where do you eat your lunch every day? At, at my desk. Yeah. Please. And I see what they're talking about because... As I'm eating at my desk, I can't really detach from work because emails start popping up and I get texts and I find myself working while I'm eating instead mm-hmm. of taking that full break from lunch. So but, I kind of get what they're saying. Well, I do. But at the same time, multitasking, I love it. Like I'll eat breakfast right here. We about to go on and I'm just like, oh, she my is. yogurt is so yeah. good. Yeah, but wait till she brings in a hard boiled egg. You know what that smells like? Robin Liz in the morning. On his radio. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. I've never been to a Great Wolf Lodge, um, but there's a couple in the Poconos and in Pennsylvania that are doing something, I guess, just because it's about to be fall. They have candy corn. You don't want to call them, I guess, Airbnbs, but they're Great Wolf Lodge Lodge rooms in the candy corn <laughs> arena it's super weird like the pillows are candy corn the I don't know, orange couches i don't like candy corn at all and the color scheme is just tragic so, so. you're not into this no not at all really because no. liz is usually into themed kind of stuff but not candy corn like i don't personally like candy corn at all it's like sugared wax and then the colors are just abrasive. Sugared <laughs> wax? A little bit. <laughs> Listen, them fighting words, because Ninja over at His Radio Plus, our producer, is like all in the candy corn. I love me some candy corn. It's just more for me. What's the draw, girl? I don't know. I just See? like it. <laughs> My but childhood, I guess. Does it stick in your teeth? No. Nope. Really? I don't think so. I, I think don't... Liz hasn't had candy corn in a while. Yeah, because I don't should, like it. Well, give it a try. Maybe maybe this is the year that she tries one candy corn and absolutely loves it. If I am, like, hard up for some sugar, maybe I would try it, but probably not. Rob and Liz in the morning on Uplifting and Encouraging His Radio. What's the first thing that comes to mind if you're thinking food? Campbell's what? Soup. Yeah, Campbell's mm-hmm. soup. That's the first thing that comes to mind. They want to get away from the image of just being soup. Campbell's. So now after, what, 150 some odd years they've been around, they said, okay, I know that we're Campbell's Soup, but now we're just the Campbell's company because they acquired, I don't know how many years ago, but a couple of different businesses that do snacks, like the goldfish. But you don't think Campbell's goldfish. No, you don't. But some people put goldfish in their Campbell's Soup. Yeah, they do. Mm, Tomato soup? Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. They own Petridge Farms. Okay. Which is the uh, the pastry stuff, right? Well, it's bread and pastry and all kinds of things. Snyder's, that's pretzels. Yes, it is. You put that in your soup. 
Prego. So that's the spaghetti sauce, right? Yeah, I'm not thinking. I'll have some Campbell, Campbell spaghetti yeah. sauce. And then uh, V8. Well, I should have had a V8. Ugh. And Cape Cod, which is potato chips. Uh, well, so they own all that and some more. So they're like, it, instead of just soup, we're more. So we're the Campbell's company. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I don't think it's a good move. I just don't, because I don't think anyone will ever equate Campbell's to spaghetti sauce.